Oh, no, that is terrible. Get up. Well, what's the matter? Matter? Well, you cannot act, that is all. You do not feel it, you do not think it. Ah. Want me to try it again? What for? I told you all week that you cannot act. Then I thought maybe if we came and rehearsed here alone tonight, but it is useless. Why, why that dummy has more feeling than you. Oh. <laughs> now look here, Walker. <clears throat> why don't you play ball? Eh? You agreed to give this part to the winner of that newspaper contest, now didn't you? Yes, yes. like a fool. Oh, well, you say that just because the winner was me. And you've always thought I was just a rich guy who wanted to hang around moving picture people. And you are. No, I'm not either. I've always really wanted to act. And if you weren't the director, old boy, I'd be making good right now. Well, you are crazy. You cannot act and you will never learn how to act. Why, you are just like the other rich loafers out here. You think acting would be a great chance to make love to all the extra oh, girls. That... Yes, I know. Yeah, now, that's another yes. thing. No. You picture guys have given me a hot reputation around here. My wife thinks that I went into that contest just so that I could meet a lot of pretty movie girls. And of course you did not. No, I did not. Uh. You are just evil-minded, that's all. Why, last year, before I ever got the movie book, you told some people I was flirting with your wife. Adel. Well, you did. In fact, a lot of people thought that was why you sent her back to Europe. Now, Adel, you leave my wife's name out of this. Who is that? Let's see. Oh, hello, Mac. Evening, <coughs> Mr. Hardell. Cablegram, Mr. Barker. Oh. Oh, thanks, Mac. Good night, sir. <coughs> Good night. Well, I suppose if you've made up your mind that I can't play the part, that's all there is to it. Eh? I can't argue with you about it. She is dead. Who's dead? Olga. The wife? Yes, she. She died yesterday. In Europe. Oh, I'm sorry, Boca. Ardell? What's the matter? What are you looking at me like that for? Died with, with your name on her lips. And you don't think? I can't believe that I, I was. Yes, I, I think. Oh, you're wrong. Walker. You're wrong. No, 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 I am not wrong. Why, I swear. Look at me, Walker. I never made love to your wife. I never even tried it. You've got to believe me. No, I, I, I do not believe oh, but you. you. Wait a minute, Walker. I, I just thought of something. I. Well, I have a letter, a letter from your wife. What? It, it was written about a month ago from, from Europe. She, I'll show you. She, she told me in that that she hated me because I wouldn't even look at her wife. Oh, she you was, oh, oh, that much was true, Walker, that much was true, but I... Well, that must be in my dressing room, Walker. Stop! You are lying. You're crazy, Walker. I'm... Oh, come on with me if you think I'm lying. Well... See, that's funny. I guess the fool watchman must have locked the door. We'll have to get a pass key from the gate. Dick. Oh, hello. What in the world? Dick, could I see you a minute, please? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, I'll be right in. Uh. You, uh, you know Helen, was it? The night watchman's kid? I think she played a small part in your last picture, you know?
Uh, I'll, I'll see what she wants. And I'll get that letter. Yes, and be quick. an hour ago. A boy named McDonald. He said that he just found out something about you and his sister. What? He said that you and she... He said that she was coming here tonight. Oh, he's crazy. I mean, he was kidding you. No, he wasn't, Dick. Dick. You know, I told you what I'd do to you. If you ever looked at anyone else again, so don't lie to me. Is she here? Why, of course not. Darling, I'll please go home. No, I won't go home, Dick. You're trying to get rid of me. She is here. I'll kill you for lying to me. Oh, my God, take it easy. There's no one here. Yeah, there. My dear, that's Borkland. We've got to rehearse. Dick. You're sure you love me? Well, of course I love you, darling. That's good. Because if you didn't, if you ever loved anyone else again, ever, there might be an accident.
I'm not afraid of you, Mrs. Ardell. I wanted him to tell you long ago. I loved Dick, and he loved me. I see. How very romantic. What did you expect me to do, fade out? Oh, he told me all about it. All about what? All about your divorce. Oh, he told you that. That's quite original. His imagination is improving. I don't understand you. Your honor. Oh, listen to me, my poor child. There isn't any divorce. There never has been any divorce. I don't believe you. But don't be a fool. Didn't you hear what he said to me just now when he kissed me? Yes, but I thought you did. That's why I had him say it. Now, look here, you'd better come home with me and we'll talk this thing over. No. You're afraid to let me see Dick. You know he loves me. Do you mind about Dick? I'll settle with him later. And you come along with me. No, I won't come. He loved me, I tell you. That's all I care about. Oh, Dick. Oh, come here now. Pull yourself together. Now, look here. You come home with me and we'll come along. He scared me there at first. Been the rounds? Yes, I've been everywhere. Anybody come in besides uh, Hardell and Borker? <coughs> yeah, Mrs. Hardell, but not another soul. Well, the place is like a morgue <coughs> around here. Mac, you better go inside. That cough's getting worse. Oh, I'm all right. Yeah, but you can never tell. What? Hey, you. What do you want? It's all right, George. Me, Ted McDonald. Mac, your kid's been drinking. All right, George. Hello, Father. How's Father? Oh, I'm all right. Ted, you'd better give me the rest of that flask now before you get into trouble. I haven't got any flask. It's all gone. Oh. Just let me alone, Pop, yes, now. Here. here, what are you doing with that, Please, Ted? Uh, what happened? Why, it's Helen. Helen? Yeah, Helen. My innocent little sister, Helen. She's in there now with him in his dressing room. What are you talking about? Well, I'm telling you. Helen's in there with Hardell. The don't listen. He'll hear you. Now you go on home, Ted. Listen, I'll now, kill him. You better get out of here, my boy, before they call a cop and have you thrown out. Go on. I get tell you, Pop. Get yourself a cup of coffee and that'll straighten you up fine. Go oh, on. Please, won't you let me go, go in? Go on. Get your car started now. Come around. Please, here, Pop, let me. Go on home. Go on, Ted. Hurry up. Get your car started. Go on. George. Yeah. Are you sure my daughter Helen didn't come in here tonight? No, she isn't on the lot. I, I, what's on your mind? Nothing. Something the boy said, that's all. Gosh, I hope nothing's happened to Helen. You know, Mac, I think she's the greatest girl ever. <laughs> in fact, if I was only 20 years younger, well, uh... <laughs> well, oh, well. I better be on my way. Hey, you take care of yourself now. You better do something for that cough. <laughs> well, Mr. White, I haven't done that for 20 years. You and me both, George. How's that? Oh, can't complain. Is a uh, Walker still working? Yeah, he's in there with Hardell. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I've uh, written that new comedy finish to walk a story, and the boy hits a pip. Yeah? I'm telling the kid it's a while. Now, now, get a load of this for a hot situation. Uh, now, the boy in the story is bashful, see? Afraid to tell the girl he loves her. Know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, what do you think? I don't have to think. She told me that yesterday. Oh, that? Oh, no, that's all out. I got a new one. A real one alive. Now, listen to this, boy. Now, the boy is in the candy store. He sees a lot of little kids. Buying little hearts, those candy hearts with models on them. Yes, and the boy buys one with I love you on it and sends it to the girl. Why, yeah, that's it. How'd you guess? I didn't guess. I saw it in the picture. Say what? Oh, what, what picture? Oh, uh, 
I think it was one of Mr. Duncan's pictures about a year ago. Oh, say, that's mine. He stole it for dirty. Oh, Mr. Fleming. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Hardell. May I speak to you for a moment, please? Why, yes, indeed. The, uh, the gate, George, please. Come, come, Mrs. Fuller. What's the gag? You know Helen McDonald. Do I know her? I'll say I do. Say, she's the greatest little girl on this lot. Except for one thing. You see, ever since I've known Helen, I've had a terrible case on her. But she thinks I'm just a big influenza germ. Oh, I see. Well, you can do her a favor. Really? How? She's back in the shadow. And she doesn't want the gate man to tell her father that she was here tonight. Oh, I see. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no, no. I'll tell you about it some other time. Just now. I don't think she'd better see anyone. Oh, all right. Well, we'll tell her I'll look out for the warning, will you? I think she'll be working on the hemming stuff. Oh, I'll tell her. Now, if you just keep that gate man busy. Don't worry. I'll have him laughing so hard they won't see a thing. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, George. Yeah? Did you ever hear the one about the piccolo player? Yeah, I heard it. But you needn't get sore about it. Say, um, say, George. Did you, did you ever hear the one about the young couple that went to get married? Uh, yeah, I heard that one, too. Is that anything you haven't heard? Yes, sir, I haven't heard you leave. Oh, say, I know. I say, I better never show you my cigarette trick, did I? No. Have you never seen my cigarette trick? No. Well, then I'll show you now. Watch close. Of course, she watched the last thing. We take the handkerchief dusting. You see, she's absolutely unprepared, absolutely clean on both sides. We put it over the hand, over the hand dusting, you see? And we put the thumb in and make a little hole. Now, watch very closely. We remove the cigarette to the victim's mouth. Now, don't look at me, but look down there. And we put it right into the handkerchief like that, you see? And we push it right down on the through. Sorry, and Pusto change you. Where did the cigarette go to? Oh, that's terrible. You got it up your sleeve, I know. Oh, uh, say, now, look. I know. Look here, you can't, you can't, you can't. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that over there with Mrs. Hardell? Why, you tell her McDonald. How'd she get out there? Search me. Maybe it's two other fellows. No, sir, either. Tell her McDonald. Hello, front gate. Yeah, that's right. This is Bill Martin, Mr. Borker's assistant. Has Mr. Borker finished yet? Uh, he, he's still rehearsing. Well, when he comes out, tell him I'm over at his house, and I've made all the changes I can in the script till he gets here. All right, I, I'll tell him. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Here's Mr. Borker now. Hey, hello. Hello. You hung up. Open the gate, will you? We are going out. Okay, Mr. Barker. Is that Mr. Hardell with you? Yes, George. It's me. Oh, Mr. Barker. Yes? Your assistant's called up. He's over to your house with some story changes waiting for you. Good. I will stop over a minute, Hardell. It's on the way to your place. All right, Barker. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Barker. Say, what time do you start to work in the morning? Not till 11. Good night. Good night. Good night. Don't work until 11. Boy, that's a break. Now I'll be able to see Helen first thing in the morning. Hey, George. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I was just thinking about that bashful boy. Oh. oh, now, wait a minute. I get this. It's a panic. Now, listen. And listen closely. Now, the boy comes up to the girl and starts to hum. Oh, who cares about that? Oh, now, listen. Then there was Clara Green, the English novel. Giving his letters to her. She had to read them. When that was hushed up, as usual, he swore to me that she'd be the last. Also, as usual. And then you came along. I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't believe it. No, I suppose not. Neither could I the first time it happened. If I could hurt him. Yes, hurt him. That's it. If that's better. I know that feeling, too. That's better. 
I know. I'll tell him I don't love him anymore. I'll make him suffer. I'll tell him I hate him. No. That's no good. A lot easier. Where are you going? I'm going to see Dick. Now, wait a minute. No. I've got to see him. Now, don't. Wait a minute. You can't walk there. Let me send for my car. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I said, Now, you sit down here. Yes. Now, you wait. I'll, I'll get my driver. Miss McDonald. Miss McDonald. Well, Martin. Yes, Miss Walker. Let's go to work on that story. Eh? I'm beginning to feel in the mood for it. <laughs> that sounds like an all-night job, sir. Maybe. <laughs> A good night's work will do me good. Uh, well, that's funny. What time is it? Just uh, 11.37. Good. Well, let's go. I've got another one. No. Oh, well, if they're going to get mean uh, about it. Yeah, I... Yeah, hey, what's that? I don't know. It sounded like some... Right, smack! Oh, look! What happened? Oh, look, there's blood in his blood. Uh, he, he, he He's hurt. He's hurt. He can't talk. Oh, call a doctor. Hurry up, hurry up. I've got it. Hmm. Cut to the father. Tears streaming down his face. His lips move, but he cannot speak. His lips move, but he cannot speak. to get a close-up of that quarrel scene, will you? Right. How do I look? Why, hello, Tony. How's my favorite author? <laughs> lay off, Al, lay off. Say, I'm looking for Helen McDonald. She's working in your set, isn't she? Yeah, she's here a minute ago. Well, never mind, thanks. I'll find her. Say, now listen, boys. Let's have a little bit of this uh, excitement music this time, will you? Come on, kids. Now, let's get this scene on. Come on, boy. Now, listen. This is the... Tony, don't! Oh, hello, Helen. I was looking for you. Don't what? Nothing. Well, what's the matter? You're trembling. No, I'm not. Let's go someplace where we can talk. Well, that's a great idea, but why not right here and walk the steps? No, Tony, not in there. Well, what are you afraid of? Mr. Burke might not like you. Oh, oh, well, um, wouldn't that be too bad? <laughs> I'll grin and see if there's anybody in there. You stay right here and Tony, I'll be right please. out. It's okay. There's nobody in here but me and uh, uh, another dummy. The dummy they were using for that fight the other day. Come on in, Helen. Well, that's funny. Here's the dummy on the floor. Help! 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 Hey, quiet! Quiet! Helen, did you know this? No, don't. How dare in there? Dead. No. Get it. Hand the racket. Shut up, don't you? Hot dogs in there. Dead. What? Did you know that baby? No, oh, come on, you better tell me before the cops get here. All right. Mr. Herring! Mr. Herring! I came back here last night through a window to see him. Hot dogs? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. They've killed Mr. Hardell. What? Mr. 
Mr. Hardell on stage 10. Somebody got him with a knife. Get police headquarters, Lieutenant Dirk. Hello. Lieutenant Dirk? Thompson. This is Mr. Grant's office. That's him in the pictures. I just found Richard Hardell stabbed to death. Uh, tell Mr. Grant I'll come myself. Get a hold of Captain Coffin. He's down at Long Beach. Tell him to meet me at the Eminent Studios right away. It's murder. I'll do come on, boy. now, sister. Quit stalling. Come on now, let's have it. You did it. You know you did it. No, I didn't. I didn't do it. He was dead when I found him. He was dead. Then why didn't you holler for help? There was nobody here last night, and I was frightened. Oh, that's it. You was frightened. Yes, I didn't know what I was doing. No, of course not. That's why you came to work this morning and played innocent. You didn't know what you was doing, not much. You didn't. Oh, wait a little, guys. The poor kid was just saying, she did it crazy. Say, you button up, will you? You talk too much. You big brute. What's that? You heard me. Say, don't you be calling me names. Ah, pull in your neck. What? Mm -hmm. Jake! Take it easy there. No need to get tough, you know. Sorry, Captain Coffin, but ever since you left, this sap here has been shooting off his face. Well, that's his privilege. <laughs> you big baboon. Say, little. All right, Jake. Anything new from the young lady while I was away? Well, that's just it, Captain. I had her all balled up pretty. And then this dumb head here... Hey, Captain, can't you let her go and talk to me? I'll tell you everything. And she'll talk later. But right now, well, the poor kid's nearly off her nut. Very well, Mr. White. I quite agree with you. Well, I'll be a... No, I won't either. I sent for one of our masons. Oh, Mr. Bryan. Now, if the young lady doesn't mind... You hear that, Helen? Thanks, Captain. You're okay. Oh, Mr. Bryan. Yes, Captain? This is the girl I told you about. Now, Mr. McDonald. Steady, baby. You better take her arm. She's pretty wobbly. Come on, I'll be right back in a minute, Captain. All right. I just heard about it and come right over. Oh, say, George, will you take Helen and Mr. Bryan and find a taxi for him, please? Sure, I will. I'd do anything for Helen. Thanks. Hey, Captain, what's the idea? She was ready to pop. I tell you, I had her dizzy. Yes, a little too dizzy. You know, Dirk, that rough stuff is old-fashioned. It's out. Be nice to people. Handle them easy. You'll go further. Well, now listen, Captain. Yeah. Here's the boy. Well, Mr. White? Well, Captain, it's like this. Helen was telling you the truth. She came back through that dressing room window last night to talk to Hardell. Oh. But when she got out here, she found that he was dead. Well, why didn't she... Wait a minute. I'm telling you why. She got out here. It was pretty dark. She saw someone leaving the set, and she thought... Well, she thought it was her father. What? Say, why didn't she say so? Because you wouldn't let her, you big goof. That director and his assistant are on the way, Captain. Shall I send them in? Yes, as soon as they get here. I think that'll be all just now, Mr. White. Thanks, Captain. You big baboon. Ah, uh, never mind, Dirk. Got your notebook? Yes, sir. I got it right here. What was that you told me about Balker? Oh, there's a lot of people around here that think that Balker had it in for Hardell on account of Madame Balker. Yes, I remember. Now, before you got here... I asked Borker about that. And he said that last night, Hardell gave him a letter from Madame Borker, which proved that Hardell was okay. You've got the letter? Yes, sir. Got it right here. Now, you can tell from that that Hardell was right. There never was anything between him and Madame Borker. Yes. It couldn't be plainer. Walker and Mr. Martin, Captain. Oh, good morning. How do you do? Sorry to trouble you, gentlemen, but uh, there's one point, if you don't mind. Not at all. Naturally. Thank you. Mr. Martin, how long did you stay at Mr. Barker's house last night? Well, 
We must have worked till 4.30. Wouldn't you say so, sir? Yes, uh, at least 4.30. Thanks. I think that'll be all just now. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Barker. Yes? One thing more. Your car was found on the street outside Hardell's dressing room this morning. Apparently where he left it. If you don't mind, we'll need it for a day or so. Oh, of course. Uh, is that all? That's all, except, well, uh, you'd both better be where I can reach you quickly for a few days. You understand, of course. Perfectly. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. I... All right. Tell me, were you ever in pictures? What? Me in pictures? <laughs> well, I should say not. What a pity. You know, you have a remarkable face. Say, what is this? Too bad. He's a perfect gangster type, eh? Yes, sir, he is. Yes, sure. Say, what the... Let it go, Dirk. Let it go. Well, I don't like to let any of those highbrows put anything over on me. Tell me, what was the doctor's idea about the time Hardell was killed? Oh, I, I made a note of that. Got it here somewhere. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, he set the time between 11 and 12.30 last night. Well, that covers Barker, for the moment anyway, unless that assistant is lying. Well, now, from what the studio manager says, I don't think so. Now, uh, oh, here's Mr. Grant now. Yes, sir. Mr. Grant, uh, this is Captain Coffin. How do you do, Captain? Uh, the Captain wanted to know about young Martin, Mr. Grant. Oh, Martin? Oh, he's a fine boy. Absolutely honest, absolutely. Well, Lieutenant, that's that. This is a terrible business, Captain. Terrible. But I want to assure you that the studio will give you every cooperation possible. Uh, we feel that the uh, whole industry will suffer unless this thing is cleaned up and cleaned up quickly. Yes, I know. You're in a tough spot. If someone is bumped off in any other town, they feature the murder. Out here, they'll feature Hollywood and pictures. Exactly. Well, I guess that's all. Goodbye, Captain. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Bye, Mr. Grant. Come in. He is in. Excuse me, Captain. Yes. I couldn't help hearing. And I was just wondering. Yes? Well, I was wondering if Borker had any other letters of his wife that you might look at. Why, uh, I suppose so. What's on your mind? Well, I was just thinking... What with? Say, listen, mastermind. You wouldn't know what it was, even if I told you. Is that so? Yes, that's so. Mrs. Hardell wants to see you, Captain. Send her right in. I'll talk to you later, Fight. This way out. Thanks, darling. You big moose. Now that you're out, stay out. Hey, hey. Mrs. Hardell? Yes. You're Captain Coffin? Yes, Mrs. Hardell. I wanted to speak to you in regard to... to last night. Yes? I happen to remember that last night at dinner, I gave Mr. Hardell a small vanity case. It had my initials on it. I see. Well? Well, I thought that if one of your men found it, it might look... well... Of course, I understand. I'm glad you told me. Mrs. Hardell. Yes? You'll be at your house if I should need you? Yes, surely. Thank you. That's all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Dick, what about it? Well, one of our boys found it all right. But it wasn't in his pocket. It was laying on the floor right next to the body. Oh. You know, she might be just trying to alibi herself. She could have croaked Hardell, you know. Dropped the vanity case. Just missed it this morning. It was laying right by the body. Well, what of it? What's that? Well, it was by the body. It might have slipped out of his pocket. Say, will you get out of here? Sorry. Well, what is it? Well, how do I look? What? Uh, do I look uh, dumb enough, or do you think that I ought to put on a... I'm off. Say, why do you think you are, anyway? Why, I'm Joe First. I'm the comic. 
I'm the boy that's going to play the cop in Mr. Duncan's pitching. Aren't you, Mr. Duncan? No. No? No. Pardon me. I'm on the wrong set. Well, for crying out loud. Telephone for you, Lieutenant. I found this kid on the lot sleeping off a gag. Raving about Hardell. Says he wants to shoot him. What's your name? Ted McDonald. Say, is it true about Hardell? Is he dead? Yes, he's dead. He's dead? Oh, he's dead. And I thought maybe I just dreamed it. Dreamed what? About Hardell and, and what I did. Oh. Say, what are you trying to make me say anyway? Why, nothing. Nothing at all. You were just telling me. I'm not telling you anything. You're a cop. I know you. All right, O'Hara. I'll talk to him later. Take him along. Okay, Chief. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Drunk and disorderly. Say, who is that cuckoo? A kid named McDonald. McDonald? Well, that's the watchman's name. Oh, must be his son. Well, maybe. Anyway, I got word about the watchman. That phone call from Doc Burton. Well? The watchman's sick in bed, sick as a dog. And Doc said it'd be dangerous to make him talk for two days anyway. That's too bad. I have a hunch we're not going to get very far with this till we talk to that watchman. Hey, you! What time? Hey, somebody hey. shoot him! Hey. Yes! The kid, get away! Get my gun! Come on! Let's Let's go. Go. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? You, Jones, get to the next step. Hey, Casey, outside! Hey, over there. No, I have not want to go away. I'm going to go on the other side. Pick him up and keep him up. Give me that gun. Say, Ted, what's the big idea? What you do? What are you trying to pull? I'm not pulling anything, and I didn't do anything. Those guys made me sore, that's all. Yeah, I don't blame you. That fat little pinhead gets my gold, too. I don't pull any rock stuff, see? And I'll see if I can kid him out of it for you. Come on, here we go. Stick him up. Got a match, Lieutenant. Well, I'll be up. Thanks, mate. Well, that's all right. Well, kid, I guess I'll have to hand it to you. You got the murderer all right. Murderer? That cuckoo? Oh, don't be funny. Well, why ain't he? Well, I'll explain later. Pinhead. Who's a pinhead? You are. Who is? You are. Who is? Mike you are. Oh, yes. I got your word, I mean. There we go. Okay, hey, on. Coffin will be back in an hour. He's been gone nearly three. Hmm. So he has. Sorry. He must have been delayed. Well, can't you find out what's happened? Can't you telephone him? No, lady, I can't. You see, he's at the hospital with the watchman. And he can't be disturbed. Tony, will you ask him if he knows how father is? Him? <laughs> what for? He doesn't know anything. Hey, what's that? Yoo-hoo! Oh, say, Mr. Walker. Yes? I didn't get a chance to tell you the other day, but I've got that gag about the bashful boy. Like to hear it? Um, not just now. Oh, all right. But it'll murder you, no doubt.
Cut that out, will you? Do you have to make that noise? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. A couple of men from the newspaper out here to see you. All right, Barrett, I'll be right out. Say, Dick, these are binding a little. Will you file them? Now, folks, I'll be right outside in case any one of you happen to think of something that you'd like to tell me. Hello, boys. Hello, Lieutenant. They just kicked us out at the hospital. But we found out the doctor's going to let Coffin bring that watchman over here. And what's the big idea? Does McDonald know anything? Well, now, you boys better wait till Captain Coffin gets here. Yeah, I know, but what about you? I understand you have the rest of the gang inside. Well, now... Sure you have. And I'll bet you made him talk, too, you old fox. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Of course, the captain wants to hear what the watchman has to say first. But in the meantime... Well, let's have it. Well, in the meantime, I did kind of work them over in there. And confidentially, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if one of them came to that door any minute and spilled the works. No. Say, who do you think it is? Well, now, that would be telling. Stand by, boys. This might be it. Oh, teacher. Well, what do you want? Say, beautiful, did the doctor think it was near 11 or 12 that Hardell was killed? That's none of your business. Thanks. Was that him? Who? Why, the murderer. No. I wish it was. Hello there. Oh, hello, Captain. Uh, anything new at the hospital? Take it easy now. I'll tell you all about it later on. Well, people, you all know that we have learned certain facts about the death of Mr. Hardell. I have every reason to believe that MacDonald knows exactly who killed Richard Hardell. Unfortunately for the interests of justice, MacDonald's condition has been so critical that the doctor has not allowed us to talk to him until today. I have just come from the hospital with McDonald. They are bringing him to this room. All right, Captain. They're here. Father. Quiet there. Mr. McDonald, I want you to look at the group of people around that table. It is our belief that you know who killed Richard Hardell. Is the murderer in that group? I've got nothing to say. What's that? <laughs> I've got nothing to say. I guess Hardell got what he deserved. Look here, McDonald, you'd better talk. No, I've been thinking. I've got nothing to say. So... That's it. Yes, that's it. <clears throat> McDonald, was the murderer of Richard Hardell one of your children? What? Was it your boy who did it? Was it Ted McDonald? You, you can't hang my son for that. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Walter. Oh, Father. Doctor. Oh, Father. Thank see if this me. has anything to do with it. Thank you. Father. I thought so. Lock that door. Stand up, all of you. You, Lieutenant. Why, she killed him right in front of me. And he stood there. Tell you, she did. She did it. I saw it with that flash. Is that it, Doctor? Enough to kill a dozen men. All right, boys. Well, Mrs. Hardell. No, no, it isn't mine. No, it isn't hers. It's mine. Helen. Yours? Where did you get it? Father. Come on now, answer up. Where did you get it? Oh, now, listen, baby, you've got to explain that. Now, you can talk to me, can't you? Now, just go right ahead and tell me everything. Where did you get that poison? That night, the night she told me about Dick. Dick? Yes. 
I was going to kill myself. Oh, I wish I had. Oh, Tony, don't look at me like that. You don't think I did it. I didn't do it, Tony. I didn't do it. You know I didn't. Read all about it. Big arrest and act of society murder. Watchman daughter jail. Hey, extra, read all about it here. Extra, thank you, lady. Extra, read all about the big murder here, the big movie murder. Extra, read all about it here. Hey, it's a special idea. He didn't do that. I'll tell you, Donald. Have you reached a verdict? We have. What is your finding? We find the defendant guilty as charged, without any recommendation. Poor little kid, that's terrible. Terrible nothing. She killed them, and I hope they hang her. Quiet, please. Helen MacDonald, the jury has found you guilty. You will appear in this courtroom on February the 4th at 10 o'clock for sentence. Now, here's the idea, Captain. Now, think back to the night of the murder. Yes. You remember that Mrs. Hardell said that that night she left her house looking for Helen, was gone 15 minutes and couldn't find her? Yes, I remember. Mm -hmm. Well, I talked to Mrs. Hardell's maid yesterday. And as a matter of fact, that night she didn't come back for over an hour. I see. Now, I wonder if you couldn't have one of your men check up on Mrs. Hardell's story. It might not lead to anything, but I'm fighting for Helen. And I'd hate to give any hunch to go by. All right, Tony. I promised I'd help you. Thanks, Captain. You've certainly been great about this. Oh, and one other thing. Say, did your handwriting guy see those letters to Madame Borker's? Yes. I could see that she'd written to Borker, and Doherty compared them this morning with that letter she wrote to Hardell. Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said it's hard to tell if they're all written by the same person or not. Uh-uh. Then the one to Hardell might be a forgery. Yes. What's your idea about that, anyway? Wasn't even an idea, Captain. Just another hunch. Oh, say, here comes Helen now. Can I see you later, Captain? You bet. Call me up. Thanks. So long. Hello, Helen. Hello, Tony. It was dear of you to come. Sure, I know. I'm great. In fact, I'm the greatest little guy in the world. But... Uh-uh, mister. But let's not talk about that until after we're married. Why, tell me. Sure. Didn't you know about it? Why, it's all set for the day after you get out of here. Oh, Tony, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess possibly that last crack of mine was a little out of line. But no kidding, baby. I'm going to get the goods on the real murderer and have you out of this place in less than a week. That's a promise. Why, you poor fun kid. You really believe that, don't you? Believe it? I know it. Say, listen to me, baby. Oh, I picked a great spot to tell you in, but you've got to know something. I love you. I love you so much that sometimes I think, sometimes I think I'm going to be a mother. Tony, you're so funny. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. Oh, don't do that. Oh, no. Now, Helen, don't cry. Oh, say, Mason, give me a break, will you? Can't I just touch you once? All right, but you know the rules. Oh, listen, baby, don't cry, please. Now, I'll tell you something funny. I'll make you laugh. Did I ever tell you my gag about the bashful boy? It's a wow. Now, the boy is bashful, shy, kind of. You know what I mean? So, so he gets, the, he gets his parrot to tell the girl. See, he has a parrot, so he gets the parrot to tell the girl. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you ever hear the one? Good morning. Put on a big mob there with uh, getting. Mm. Good afternoon, Mr. White. Nice day. Huh? I said it's a nice day. Don't be silly, it's going to rain cats and dogs. Oh, I don't know, Mr. White. This is California, you know. Sure I know. Last year I wore hip boots along. My family thought I was a flood sufferer. Oh, yes, but last year was very unusual. Sure. So are you. Ready to go? Ready to go. 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 Ready to go.
so. Camera. Well, what do you know, mister? I know that you only need 30 cents. That's what I know. <laughs> now, never mind about the 30 cents. For instance, now, what are the five senses? A nickel and you only six. I do not. <laughs> I don't get sore now. You know anything about grammar? Ain't seen her all day. <laughs> don't put on old phone like that, young man. I don't want to hear you do it again. For instance, the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. I know it. That's what I've been trying to tell you all night. <laughs> of course I do. I say, go ahead. A, E, you owe me 30 cents. I just had a brainstorm. I think I've got it. You mean you have a new angle on the murder? No, but I've got a new angle on that bashful boy gag. Oh, come now, Tony. Well, I have. Now, suppose the boy was in vaudeville. Suppose he was a ventriloquist. He could get his doll to tell the girl he loved her. Don't you see? Now, wait a minute, Tony. That whole gag is out. What do you mean it's out? Well, Borker got temperamental, and I closed production on the picture, and he's going back to Europe. In fact, he leaves for New York tomorrow. Boy, just when I think of a hot one like that, I... Say, Christmas, what a dummy I've been. The murder, the murder, I've got that too. Why, it's a pipe, I'll be right over. about that letter. And as they were walking across the stage to get the car, Walker saw that dummy, thought of a way to kill Hardell, and create for himself a perfect alibi. All right, he did it. He killed Hardell with that knife and put the body in the chair. Now make a picture in your mind of that. Walker picked up the dummy and left the set. McDonald saw him leaving, turned, saw the body, touched it, and nearly passed out. Stout and the shot nearly finished him, and he didn't come to until later when Helen saw him leaving the set, and naturally thought that he had killed Hardell. Now then, Walker went and put the dummy in the car. After he got it all set, he drove to the front gate, and there he used his ventriloquism to make the dummy say goodnight to me and the watchman. Then he drove home, and at the house, he pulled the same gag on Martin, his assistant. Now after Martin goes in the house, Walker drives the car into the garage with the dummy in it, you see? Then he came back in the house, and there he worked with Martin, as he said, until 4.30. Now, after Martin had gone home, Walker goes to the garage, gets the car out, and drives to the studio. Climbs in through that dressing room window, and puts the dummy on the set. Comes back out, goes home, and forges that letter from Madame Walker. How's that, Pinhead? Hello, hello. Oh, he's cut me off a big baboon.
Put up that gun. It might go off. Quite right. It might. Yeah, well, I don't think so. You've got too much brains to let the world know you murdered Richard Hardell. Thank you, Mr. Hoyt. <laughs> but if you force me to kill you, I will put this revolver in your hand. Walk through that window and down the fire escape. Quick fade out. Next. Headlines in the morning papers. Everyone will greatly regret the unfortunate suicide of Mr. Tony White, heartbroken over the unhappy fate of his sweetheart, Helen McDonald. You're not going to let them sentence that girl, Borker. It's not human. On the contrary, self-preservation is the first law of nature, my boy. But a kid like that, an innocent kid. I suppose if you were in my place, you would give yourself up, hmm? Of course I would. Anybody would. Really? It is quite simple. You write the confession of the murder and swallow this. I assure you, it is quite painless. In fact, you saw the results on McDonald's. Kill him too? Naturally. Now, Mr. White, let us see if you are as clever as I think you are. If I kill you with this as I first intended, nothing will save Helen. You write the confession and she will go free. Compared with a bullet, the poison is really quite delightful. <laughs> Give me a pen. No, no. Uh, use your own. Doesn't Tony answer? No, sir. His phone must be out of order. Well, go over and see what has happened to him. Hurry up. Yes, sir. If you don't mind. Why? Why, he's low in his mind, that is all. He thought he had a new angle on the murder, but he was wrong. Weren't you, Tony? Yeah, all wrong. All right, I'll tell Mr. Grant. Yeah, tell him I could bump myself off. Now, don't talk like that, Tony. You'll be all right. No kidding. I mean it. He will be all right. I will bring him around. All right, Mr. Parker. Captain, I got it. Stop it. Got it, Mark. Go away, Captain. He'll tell you how he did it. 
You'll find the poison somewhere on the desk that he used on McDonald. Thanks, Mike. Say, Pinhead, call up my girl at the jail, will you, and tell her to get ready for a fade out? Well, I... Well, I... Well, I don't care if I do. You got my message? Yes. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, 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 baby. Say, I found out how that bashful boy tells the girl he loves her. How? Like this. Uh -huh. 